we are going to Muhammad Isa, yes, uh, who is a, a, a lecturer in uh, Ain Shams University in Egypt. And he is uh, now in uh, Canada, in Ottawa. He has a, a bachelor degree, a master degree of anesthesia and critical care. He has doctor degree in medicine in anesthesia and the critical care. He has a European diploma of intensive care medicine and he's advanced uh, 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 provider of uh, perioperative transesophageal echo examination in the perioperative settings. Uh, he's now a clinical fellow of obstetric anesthesia in the University of Ottawa in Canada. And uh, he's going to talk to us about uh, a subject which is uh, new as he is. Uh, uh, this is the time of our uh, junior uh, generation. He's going to talk to us about the airway ultrasound. And this is of course a very important lecture and we are all excited to hear about it. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Chalabi. Uh, good evening, everyone, and good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you as well, Dr. Mahdi, for inviting me again uh, uh, to be a part uh, of uh, this amazing work. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you today. Uh, for those who don't know me, I guess uh, Dr. Chalabi has already said, uh, I'm uh, already uh, a lecturer of anesthesia and intensive care at Ain Shams University. I'm now I'm doing a clinical fellowship in OB anesthesia as well at uh, the University of Ottawa. Uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, airway ultrasound. Uh, so through this lecture, I will uh, try to discuss and outline the anatomy and of the larynx and the applied uh, anatomy and how it's related uh, to our ultrasound sc uh, scanning. I'll try to talk also about how to obtain our images uh, which probe should we use, and uh, how, what, are, what are our scanning techniques. And also I'll be talking about some uses of airway ultrasound in our clinical practice, like uh, identify, like in difficult uh, intubation scenarios by identifying the cricosyroid membrane and uh, by detecting inadvertent surgical intubation and screening for difficult intubation as well. Uh, so as you see here, so the larynx is formed of uh, a cartilaginous uh, skeleton, muscles, membranes, and ligaments. So as regards the uh, uh, cartilaginous uh, skeleton, uh, it's formed of three unpaired, main unpaired cartilages, big cartilages, which are for sure, you know, the thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, and the epiglottis, uh, which arises mainly from the back surface of the thyroid cartilage, as you see here. Uh, it also has uh, three small uh, paired cartilages, such as the arytenoid, uh, corniculate, and cuneiform. And as you see here, the vocal cords are usually uh, extending from the arytenoid to the back surface of the thyroid uh, cartilage. Uh, so talking about the thyroid cartilage, it has mainly two big lamina, as you can see here, uh, which meet in the midline. Uh, and form a prominent angle, which we call the laryngeal prominence or Adam's apple, as you can say. Uh, and the superior thyroid notch, as you can see here. And this is very important as we will be seeing uh, during uh, discussing the ultrasound scanning for the thyroid uh, cartilage. And then below it, you can find the cricoid cartilage, which is, um, has a narrow anterior arch, as you see here and the broad posterior lamina, which has articular facets uh, on the lateral surface to uh, 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 articulate with the thyroid cartilage and the superior also on or some articular facets of the upper surface, which would be articulating with the base of the arytenoid cartilage. So for image acquisition, uh, we need to know that we are gonna scan uh, as superficial structures, so we can use a high frequency linear probe with less penetration power, which can give us the advantages of uh, the advantage of having a high uh, linear resolution, uh, high axial resolution. 
so for the uses, as we said, uh, the existing literature have shown many uses of airway focus in managing difficult intubation, intubation uh, by better identification and visualization of the cricothyroid membrane and by helping us to detect uh, the inadvertent uh, esophageal intubation. Uh, and we all for sure know that uh, airway management is considered to be uh, the anesthetist and critical care physician's most recognized skill and that the complication of airway management can cause and lead to a higher morbidity and mortality. Uh, so for the management of difficult airway, cricocyrodotomy is uh, always or usually uh, the last approach that we can that we can use to save a patient's life when all other uh, non-surgical approaches fail in cases of difficult intubation and difficult ventilation. Uh, however, the success rate of life-saving cricocyrodotomy by anesthesiologist is low, with a failure rate reaching up to uh, sixty-five percent, as shown. Uh, by the national, uh, and here in this study, by the fourth national audit project by the Royal College of Anesthetists. And uh, this is usually due to uh, failure or difficult identification of the cricocyroid membrane by external visualization palpation. However, on the other hand, uh, airway ultrasound can facilitate the identification of cricocyroid membrane, which in turn improves uh, the success rate and decreases the time needed for cricocyroidotomy. Uh, so, as you see here in these interesting studies, it was shown that using ultrasound has a better success rate in identifying uh, the cricocyroid membrane. Uh, this can be done either, as shown by this study, uh, by pre-identification and marking the cricocyroid membrane, uh, as shown as in this study by Malin and colleagues, or by dynamic uh, scanning during cricocyroidotomy procedure. And we will see how, uh, for sure, I'll show you how to do this later on. Uh, so let's go to how to scan, uh, scanning techniques. So we have two scanning techniques. The first one is called uh, the TACA technique, which is a transverse scan technique, which is done simply by placing, as you see here, a high frequency linear probe in the submandibular area behind the mentum and just sliding it slowly uh, downwards, as you see here. So when you slide it, you'll first, you'll see what we call, we'll get what we call the TACA technique, which is, T is, stands for the thyroid cartilage, which as we see here, um, will be seen first. And as we said before in our applied anatomy, it's gonna be, it's formed of two big lamina, which are attached together at the midline forming that angulated curve. So we can see it, or we can appreciate it as an inverted V, uh, inverted V-shaped thyroid cartilage or triangular uh, cartilage, as you see here. And then when you go uh, slowly, caudally, you'll start to appreciate the air line or the air mucosal interface between, of, uh, for the cricothyroid membrane between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. And remember the cricothyroid membrane or the air mucosal interface will always be a hyper echoic, unlike the cartilages, which is gonna be a less echoic or hypo, more hypo echoic. Then when you go further down, you'll start to see the cricoid cartilage, which is more um, circular, as you see here, uh, and instead of being inverted, angulated V-shaped, uh, as you see here for the thyroid cartilage, uh, and so when you when you reach the cricoid cartilage, you start you you will be you should be uh, moving your probe again upwards cranially or cephalade in order to get the air mucosal interface. So that's why we call it the TACA technique, which is thyroid airline, cricoid cartilage, and then slide upwards again to reach to the airline where you can identify the cricothyroid membrane. So. Uh, these are some slides. So showing you here the hyperangulated or the inverted V-shaped appearance of the thyroid cartilage when you go slightly downwards. And then at some point you can even see um, the vocal cords or uh, the, the vocal cords, which is, as we said before, would be extending from the back surface of the thyroid cartilage to the uh, arytenoid cartilages. And then when you slide further down, you'll start to see, get into the cricothyroid membrane, uh, 
uh, as you can see, you can appreciate here the hyper uh, airline interface. And then when you go further down, you'll get the circular or the uh, cricoid cartilage, which you see here, which is more hypo echoed as you can see here. And when you reach that point, you should uh, slide your probe uh, slowly upwards to get back to, and here again, sick hypo, hypo echoic R-shaped uh, cricoid cartilage. And when you slide back upwards, you'll get to into the hyper echoic or get to the air mucosal interface, which is more hyper echoic, as you see here, uh, for the cricothyroid membrane. And just to show you, like if you slide further downwards, you'll get into the tracheal rings where you can appreciate the presence of the thyroid gland, uh, the isthmus and the two thyroid glands here. So uh, another way to scan or another scanning technique is the longitudinal scan, which we call the string of pearls, uh, which is done simply by also placing a hyper, uh, like a high frequency linear probe uh, in a longitudinal uh, uh, approach. Uh, and by placing it, so the most difficult part of this approach is just to identify the midline. So once you identify the midline and you put the probe in a like a longitudinal axis, you'll be able to see, uh, as you see here, First, you'll be able to see the tracheal rings, which are, as you see, as, as we said before, all, always the cartilages or the rings would be hypoechoic. So the tracheal rings here are hypoechoic uh, structures that can be seen along a hyperechoic line, which is the air mucosal interface. So these are the tracheal rings. And these, this is... Uh, air mucosal interface behind the tracheal rings. So simply by just identifying, placing the probe in a longitudinal axis and putting it in the midline uh, of the patient's neck, you'll get that. And simply just by keeping the probe in the midline and just sliding it upwards, slightly upwards, you'll start to appreciate uh, or you'll start to see what we call uh, the cricoid cartilage the cricoid cartilage, which is more or larger and more superficial when compared to the tracheal rings. So here are our tracheal rings. And this is going to be the cricoid cartilage. Uh, and then when you slide your probe further up, you'll start to see another bigger uh, cartilage, which is more still hypoechoic, as you see here. So cartilages, you, we should always remember that a cartilage is a hypoechoic, not a hyperechoic. So you, when you slide your probe further up, also in the midline, you'll start seeing a larger hypoechoic thyroid cartilage. And you can see, you can appreciate the membrane, the hyperechoic air uh, causal interface, uh, hyperechoic, which is the cricothyroid membrane, as you see here. So, uh, and then you can try uh, for identification, you can like just for marking, marking your cricothyroid membrane, you can try to even slide, as you see here, a uh, uh, hyperechoic marker, let's say a needle uh, in between the transducer and uh, the patient's skin. And as you see here, so this is a longitudinal approach. So we can see here the cricoid cartilage the thyroid cartilage, and you can see the hyperechoic air mucosal interface of the cricothyroid membrane. And we can see here uh, the marker, our markers that we're trying to slide in between the patient's skin and the transducer. So when we reach this, this point, and we can then try to mark the spot, and now we have, uh, we were able to identify and to mark our cricothyroid membrane. Uh, in case that we need to uh, do an emergency cricothyroidotomy in case of failed uh, other non-surgical approaches in cases of difficult intubation and ventilation. And uh, one other use for airway ultrasound, as I mentioned before, is detecting heat advent 
uh, esophageal intubation. Uh, so for sure, we all know that capnography is considered to be the standard of care for the uh, primary application of endotracheal tube intubation. Uh, however, airway ultrasound can be really helpful in situations where capnography is unreliable, unre such as cardiovascular arrest. And there was even a, some uh, meta-analysis by Chu et al. that suggested that in situations where capnography may be unreliable, ultrasound can be helpful with a high diagnostic value uh, and high uh, for identifying esophageal intubation with optimal sensitivity and specificity. So how to scan? So in order to detect uh, inadvertent esophageal intubation, we can do it uh, like a dynamic scanning during uh, the intubation by just placing uh, uh, by just placing the tube, uh, the probe high frequency also linear probe uh, transversely just above the sternal notch uh, where you can see also in this study uh, where uh, they they have found that determining tracheal tube placement with ultrasound was found to be fast and high significant, uh, was a high significant uh, uh, utility in arrest situation where in tidal uh, CO2 was not uh, re reliable, as we said before. And uh, also it was described in patients who were uh, in, in COVID-19 patients uh, where uh, considering, you know, you, you have your protective uh, PPEs and just to avoid uh, spreading uh, the, uh, the, the virus by auscultation and potentially insufflating the stomach after unsuccessful intubation. So as we said before, just by uh, imagine uh, doing uh, dynamic imaging uh, during intubation, uh, uh, you can appreciate the, presen the presence of the esophagus, as you see here, so this is the midline. You can see here your tracheal rings, and that you can find here on the right, uh, left uh, posterior part of the trachea. You can find uh, like that hypoechoic area, which is considered to be esophagus. It's it's not easy to find, but definitely when you get a like uh, endotracheal tube inside the esophagus. You can really now appreciate the presence of that hypoechoic area of the esophagus, uh, which, as you can see here, you can find two air filled structures. First is the trachea, and the second is the esophageal intubation, which we call a double, as you see here, which is, uh, was described uh, by Sahu and colleagues as being as called double tract sign. So also there are uh, some other uses for uh, for airway ultrasound. One of them is the screening for difficult intubation, which which is still have some studies being uh, going on in progress uh, uh, to try to look at the use of airway ultrasound for screening for uh, for possible uh, difficult intubation uh, by looking at many variables such as tongue based sickness and uh, tongue widths and distance between the skin and the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone as well. Uh, so these are some references that I have been, uh, that I've used uh, for making this lecture. Uh, just for further reading, if anyone uh, wants to read more about this topic. And thank you everyone. And any questions? Um, till brochure we arrived here. Uh, um, Ahmed, thank you very much. It was an excellent texture of finding uh, ultrasound in airway management. And uh, uh, I got um, a lot of breeze about those lectures today at Airway Module. Uh, started with the region, the Brock Doyle and uh, Dr. Mishra, and the uh, Brock with Hatcher is here now taking over. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the presentations were outstanding and really uh, it, you can see from the 
from the feedback that everyone is very happy for the presentations and how good they are. And now uh, we are opening the floor for discussions. Uh, any discussions, any questions? Do we have 